DNVR Broncos live coming to you from Studio A here at the DNVR bar where the A stands for airport. Hopefully not. Is that where the stadium's moving? I got to tell you what. Um, I thought that the majority of Broncos fans were kind of on on our side, uh, and you're really pushing it. But uh, Henry and I are with you. Keep mm-hmm. the stadium downtown mm-hmm. is ideal. Putting stuff out on Twitter last night. Nope. A lot of people just want a new stadium wherever it can be the biggest, the best, and compete with the AT&T. A lot of comparisons I've heard with it, which is a Cowboys stadium. So fight. A lot of those. <laughs> I was just surprised to, to, to see that. Have you seen that at all? Uh, a little bit. A, a lot of people who don't live in Colorado exactly. want a big, fancy Broncoville to fly into, and it'll be nice for them because it'll be five minutes away from where they're playing. <laughs> true. You know, exactly. there's going to be a train from the airport to the to the stadium if it's out there. And yeah, it'll be five I mean, minutes. You probably ride like an electric scooter. <laughs> wow, it'll be a plane landing, like you know, in the end zone, pretty much. So there'll be a Pena Boulevard for scooters. Yeah, exactly. Scooter Boulevard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so of course, the news is the Broncos sent out a survey, which isn't really news, um, but it is certainly stoked the flames of the yep. conversation around yes. what the Broncos should do uh, with the stadium. Uh, and I think there's a lot of differing opinions on this sort of thing. And I, and personally, I know uh, our good friend D-Line doesn't agree with this. I like the Broncos putting this out there, even if the cynic in me tells me they really don't mm-hmm. give a shit what anyone says. Um, I, I just think it, it's nice to make People mm-hmm. feel like their voices were heard. Um, the Broncos are Denver. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The Broncos are a staple. It's literally one half of their name. It, it is. is. And yet, they oh. might have to change it to Green Valley Ranch. <laughs> or is it technically Denver Broncos Football Club? Is it just Denver Broncos? Uh, nobody um, calls legally, them that. Nobody calls it's Denver them Broncos Football Club. <laughs> Interesting. Um, 25 to 50. Um, I know, me too. By the way, we're presented by DraftKings Sports. We are. Uh, by yes, we are. Sportsbook. Um, and so, anyways, the questions have come out. New stadium, mm-hmm. current location, renovate uh, the current stadium, move the stadium to a different location, um, entertainment district around the stadium, mm-hmm. open air, closed dome. So there's a lot of stuff here. Um, obviously, my strongest opinion about all of this is do not move the stadium outside of Denver. Um, if you want to build a new stadium, Go right ahead. Just keep it where it is. That's what you did last time. Knock, you know, you knock down the old one. You build the new one in that spot. Um, to me, that would be cool. I'm, I'm not. I don't have any attachment necessarily to Empower Field as a stadium. I don't even think it's that mm-hmm. well designed. Don't think anyone has any attachment to Empower. Wow, I, I definitely do. I mean, maybe it's just because I grew up there. Yeah. I mean, that's like, you know, you come down, see your grandparents, go to a game or two every year. Like, I've got so many memories there. I think there's a lot of people who do. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. But what I'm saying is there's it not that itself much isn't there. that special as a stadium. True. Definitely. I, I agree. Um, with that being said, one of the many, many, many things that make mm-hmm. Denver special um, is the fact that all four teams are in downtown. Uh, and... You know, it's funny because I have people tweeting at me lots of dumb stuff. But one thing is like, <laughs> go check out some other cities and see what mm-hmm. you think of that. I'm like, I have. I traveled with the Broncos mm-hmm. for three seasons. Uh, I've been to definitely more than half of the NFL stadiums. Damn. The ones in downtown are dope. The ones outside of downtown huh. suck ass. Like, it's like a one for one guarantee. Sure, you have the Jerry Worlds and I haven't been to L.A. yet. Um, and you know, there are a few of these new ones that are just cool cause they're new. Right. But there is so much to be said about going to a city and being in the city to go to the game. The mm-hmm. worst one in the NFL, in my opinion is Arizona because you go all the way out to Glendale and people think that the traffic is actually, it will be better. The traffic is worse. Because you have everyone going to a place that they never go to on any, mm-hmm. at any other time. Uh, who would say the traffic will be better? Well, they think that they're like, the traffic in Denver is so bad, so move the stadium out. It'll help the traffic oh, in Denver. It's yeah. like, well, yeah, it might help, help the traffic Denver. on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, eight times a year. Mm-hmm. But the traffic going from Phoenix to Glendale is an absolute disaster. And then you're just out there. You know, f- for a lot of people, whether you're visiting or what like 
you go to the game, you drink, <laughs> you have a good time, you can hop on a scooter and ride right into downtown where, where maybe your hotel is, you can catch a lift and you know, it's a 10 minute ride. From there, you like your transportation is like the most important thing of your entire day. How am I getting in and out of the stadium? I'm sure drinking and driving goes up exponentially <laughs> because people got to drive to get out there. And well, they're going to drink at the stadium. On that topic, though, I'd be curious, and I'm sure the Broncos know and are finding out through these surveys and just from past, I'd be curious how many people drive to the games and what mm -hmm. percentage that is. Because I, I do think that even though it is downtown, I still think a, a large majority mm -hmm. of people do drive drive to the game. And it yeah. is a long survey. Like, I oh only tweeted God, out parts 30, of it. It's, it's 30 minutes. Yeah. And no, that was, was honestly, I talked to a couple of people that took it, and a lot of people responded to me mm -hmm. online saying, this thing was way mm -hmm. too long. So, so you you, you, you said, uh, you know, that are they actually taking this into consideration? Well, they're certainly asking a lot from their fans, so I hope it's mm -hmm. at least a small bit. And, yeah, and it's like the fan yeah. vote in an all-star game, you know? Like, mm -hmm. it gets one vote. Right. <laughs> but yeah. All million fans. It's definitely a good public perception, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but they do ask, like, how do you get to games? Mm -hmm. And if all of these options were available, which option would you choose to get to games if you could do that? And, and so they do take that into account and obviously like, they're definitely using at least some of this like you hope it's not just the economic stuff we're saying like what is the most you would pay for this what was the most you pay for that if these were your three options what would you pay i like, like a lot of these questions to just play off that hank yeah. they're like how much would you be willing to pay for this yep. thing and and so they're trying to gauge your interest on how much uh, they can charge mm -hmm. you and and stuff like that and then the next question after that is like essentially Will you actually follow through with that payment? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's but, so funny. Like, but, you know, definitely, to, like, maybe, right, yeah. Right. But to go back to what you were saying about people driving, I mean, a lot of people drive, obviously. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be the case yeah. for anything. But I think what you would notice is if you moved the stadium, the traffic would be so much worse because there aren't people who can't drive. You know what yeah. I mean? Or don't drive. Or right now, if you take downtown. the light rail and, and get off at that stop on a game day, like, it's orange and blue completely packed every single car. Um, mm -hmm. If you're walking under that tunnel after the game to just get back into downtown, yeah. there's foot traffic. All these people who are walking away from the stadium. If you were to move to out by the airport, every single person that's going mm -hmm. to the game is going to have to drive and or I'm sure there would be some sort of train uh, system as well. But you're just getting more cars. So to me, it's not like I'm just doing my like, oh, I'm biased about Denver mm -hmm. thing. Like I've been to all of these places and it is exponentially better whether you live mm -hmm. in the place or you're just visiting the place when the stadium is in downtown because yeah. you can you can go and experience the city and the game at the same time. So is that your number one thing you're looking for in a new stadium? Mm -hmm. I guess I should say the future of a stadium, whether it's a new one or a renovated one, is keeping it downtown. That's your number one ask. It's so much my number one ask that I would sign something right now that says the Broncos can't change their stadium for the next 100 years. Um, <laughs> like nothing will change about yeah. the stadium as long as it stays where it is. Yeah. Okay, Henry, is that your number one? Yeah, but I come from the exact opposite place of Ryan. Like, I've never seen, I've never been to an NFL stadium other than this one. Like, oh, I, for pro sporting events outside of Denver, I've been to a, a Dodgers game and I've been to an LA Kings game. And the Dodgers, it's awful to get out there. Oh. The Kings, right downtown, it's actually pretty convenient. So, like, I can't say it's miserable to go to these games that are all over the place. What I can say is, it sounds really, 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 really awful. And part of what's so awesome about Denver is that all of this stuff is just right around here. So I'm, yeah, that's easy number one for me. It's And maybe, like, it's almost worth saying, like, it's the only thing I care about. Wow. Like, that's how I, I feel exactly. It's just um, like anything else is whatever. I think you guys make a really good argument. Mm -hmm. And I'm from Denver, lived in Denver yeah. my whole life. I think it's awesome that all the stadiums are downtown. Mm -hmm. But that's not my number one thing. My number one thing for this new stadium is a home field advantage to get to the football itself. I want the Broncos to not build a stadium that is so state of the art that it's kind lifeless. of a kind of a football field and lifeless yeah. exactly and no character and no part of Denver or football or the South Stands or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, if a, if they build a brand new stadium. Have it be state of the art and so cool, but have it built where the fans are on top of the field. Have it mm -hmm. built where uh, you make it so that the the walkways are uh, 
um, you know, hollow. So when yeah. when fans are smashing their feet, it sounds really loud. And some of these new stadiums are completely lifeless, and and mm -hmm. just seem like, um, you know, just just look at the 49ers. I think that they fit 55,000 people in that stadium, and there's like, and the reason it's so small mm -hmm. is because they took out so many normal seats to have so many suites and owners things. And you know what that does? It it just makes it uh, just for the rich. Don't do that. Build a hundred thousand yeah. person stadium. Put twenty thousand, uh, take twenty thousand of those seats out for the the owners' boxes, but still make it huge so that there's eighty thousand normal humans that can go <laughs> to the game and be cheering and yeah. be loud. So I do want it in Denver. There's no doubt about that. I'm never going to make an argument to move it outside of Denver. But to me, mm -hmm. let's let's keep it about football. Let's keep it about building mm -hmm. the best home field advantage because that's something the Broncos have had forever Definitely. it's just a great home field advantage and when you think about going to a chargers game it's like oh the broncos fans can easily take that over and even if the broncos fans weren't that's not a, a tough crowd to play in. it's not a tough stadium to play in mm -hmm. when you think about the chiefs though you're like shit yeah unfortunately they've got a really good home field advantage keep that for the broncos and i think it was the first question of the actual survey is ranking how important a bunch of different traditions are to you so it's like one to seven, not important to very important. And they've got the pregame skydiving. They've Which got. I didn't think of as like a important. But tradition. again, like but it is a thing that you look exactly forward to when you go to like. I remember when I was like five, going to games, and that was like the coolest thing. Is like, oh shit, look, they're falling. And the Shannon fact that they Sharp did it once, didn't he? Oh, is that Pretty true? Sure he did. Huh? On the back of someone, like yeah, he wrote someone. Yeah. Someone, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's like not the most important thing, but when you bring it up there, it's like. That is kind of sick that they do that, and they've done it for right. at least as long as I've been alive. But then they have, like, Thunder running after touchdowns. Um, Miles going up before the fourth quarter on top of the scoreboard, which is, like, a new thing. I was like, yeah, oh, I guess that is kind of a tradition. Um, the incomplete chant is obviously, like, potentially number one also, of all these. That won't be affected one. by anything kind of weird. No, no. <laughs> but unless they just don't have the PA guy say, like, and the pass is. That's true. Like, if everybody said, no, we don't want it, who knows? But what Bo Ryan's saying is that has nothing to do with the stadium. No. But when they reevaluate things, it's whatever. Um, the Rocky Mountain Thunder is what they call the fan stomping. That's kind of what you're talking about. Well, that's such an easy one. Make it loud when people do that. Yep. Like, they didn't do a great job getting it from the last stadium to this stadium. They tried, they, though. And that's what's important. Yeah. That's. And I'd imagine we can do better. Honestly, it, I think it, it's the a reason... lot better though than brand new stadiums. Oh, yes, for sure. Absolutely. And that's what I mean. That they put effort into it so yeah. you can hear it. Um, the the thing about old Mile High that made it special is it was like rickety. Right. So like yeah. you're actually getting like metal <laughs> slapping on metal, which makes a Have really it built loud like sound. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we want to build everything loosely. Like let's loosen a couple screws before no, we open this thing I'm up. I'm sure you can put like things in the ground it's yeah. probably a lot more money to do for something completely extra but <laughs> do it if you're spending six billion anyway yeah, yeah for sure why not the altitude sickness video that's, for the fourth you know, quarter that's home field advantage yeah and i also think incomplete is home field advantage oh, I love absolutely it. because you hear you, the once in a while they do a survey like what's the most annoying thing and like a lot of players will be like oh the incomplete chan denver oh, pisses me yeah, off yeah yeah it's great how is that unique to De like it's so cool it's unique to denver but just how have other places not copied it it's, it's so because good. it's copying zero other people have taken it everything I else know. that happens I know. in sports gets yeah. taken and it's i feel so like cool. that's just unique enough like it's the same thing where it's like obviously you're not going to steal the minnesota like skull clap over the head chant. But they stole that from the iceland football team <laughs> but but yeah that's fine <laughs> that is fine to steal from them like if you're an nfl team that starts doing that people are gonna be like wait what the hell are you doing incomplete isn't that far in that direction but it's just enough where it's no, like you just stole that incomplete's an in-game thing that's referring yeah. to football itself Definitely. that skull chant is like specific to the vikings but also like what so i I get what you're saying like stealing from another nfl team why doesn't like purdue do it true that is that is good <laughs> yeah because any like if anybody say like the browns just start doing the incomplete thing imagine how much we would be clowning them for doing that yeah like it, but you know what it would be it, they would find it cool and then so for their fan base you know if we were in their fan base we'd be saying yeah it's cool f it that we stole it we're gonna make yeah. it cool our own yeah but like i don't know and then th those the fans, seattle fans no. don't enjoy when people say like you just stole the 12th man thing including the font from texas tech a &M. A &M, a &M. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that bronco yeah see seattle's fans seattle fans don't mm -hmm. care and m fans no don't but care i think they do their care own fan base about think, their own fan base doing it i don't think so but i think they care i think they get annoyed they by people saying they like, have to deal with exactly it. it's like you just stole that ha 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 but see that's that's different though. That that's a brand. Anyways, everyone's okay. been stealing yeah. stuff forever. I'm exactly. shocked that one hasn't that's, been stolen. That's, in, that's what I'm saying. You know, yeah. However many years we've been doing it. They also have life. the stampede band and the drumline. 
one. Like, yeah, yeah that no can go. The the fan wow chant. The what? That's when everybody pounds their it's chest the, before the game. Yeah. Oh. That's another one that, you know, we've had. It was it was fun in the like when Peyton Manning was here. Like I remember, was it Big Al who led it in an AFC Championship game? There was right at the beginning because that's right when the Wolf of Wall Street came out, and so it was like yeah. he was doing the thing. Yeah. Like it was cool in those playoff games. Ever since, it's just been like, yeah. Yeah, also eh. the, the fact that they call it that just ruined it for me entirely. I know, I know. it's so it's, bad. I remember seeing that yeah. on the, they send out a little pregame yeah, to media yeah. before, and the, the yeah, the wow chants, like, oh my God. Yeah. What? It's this bad. Even, why didn't they call it, like, the chess? I don't know. Pounding. Just call it the Matthew McConaughey before you call it the, <laughs> the wow chant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It was kind of cool. Like, you sh they show, like, the Matthew McConaughey clip, and mm -hmm. he's doing, like, the mm -hmm. You know, also, you know what hurts traditions it's is also when you funny that like the Denver Broncos are playing a clip that comes shortly after he's like asking a dude how much he jacks off. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. They don't include that, that part, weirdly no, enough. They don't. No. Also, you know what hurts traditions is when you suck. And so also these true. things, yeah. what did you point to about that one Although, being cool? It was when they're when in an AFC championship everybody's game. Everybody's hyped. Everybody's it's pounding their chest. they're in fun. an AFC championship game. So then they, they try to introduce these other things, like the freaking song that they've got rid of. They introduced that for two years and then got rid yeah. of it. When you suck, fight song. When you suck you're not that. playing the fight songs as much because you're not getting in the end zone. You know, it, it's hard to remember <laughs> that some of the these horse. things exist because when they score touchdowns, uh, it doesn't happen that much. So you're like, oh, that's a tradition. Mm -hmm. I just thought it's something they occasionally did when you're good all of these things are better will, and so when they've tried to introduce mm -hmm. new traditions the past few years they suck yeah yep. introducing traditions is is like an oxymoron to me traditions just happen some yeah, of these though you can't have force it. some of these they've absolutely forced well yeah mm -hmm. for sure but like i bet you the wolf of wall street thing they just did it one game like as they thought it was yeah. gonna be a one game thing it's like and a then playoff they were like, thing. oh yeah. that's yeah. slapped that's Let's awesome. do it next game too mm -hmm. well i mean what's the best tradition in town Ralphie running. Uh, uh, that's out of town. That's out of town. That's up there. Okay, fine. It's uh, the all the small things with the abs. Yep. It's sick, yep. and it just came out of nowhere. Incomplete Everybody sang along. Probably one. like better than that because it's but, been around for longer. Yeah, but yeah, you take, I will uh, say the all the small things thing is perfect, and it's directly tied to winning a championship. Right. It's, yeah. Right. Right. I'm curious how long that is going to be a thing. I hope it's forever. That'd be awesome if yeah. it's forever. But I, I I just wonder if it will be. I heard Nate McKinnon on a podcast before this season be like yeah that was sick like we loved it so much i just don't know if we can do it for 41 games plus again this season and but now here we are <laughs> <laughs> here we are yeah um what else with uh, th this conversation so that really started in january when they started doing focus groups yep. now they're sending it out to a larger group of people they sent some of the yep. surveys uh to season ticket holders about a brand new stadium mm -hmm. they sent some to season ticket holders about uh uh, renovating Mile High, mm -hmm. doing an even bigger renovation than the hundred million dollars that they're doing. They're still in the the gathering process, so there, there's a lot still that's going to come out that mm -hmm. we're going to find out. I eventually think it's going to be a new stadium. I unfortunately, think it's going to be a new stadium uh, out by the airport where they mm -hmm. can just build a whole town around it. Um, but we're still so far away from that actually happening and coming yep. together. And that is kind of the heavy favorite, and I, it's because I mean money. we haven't we haven't seen because two of money. Yes, definitely because of money. But we haven't seen Isn't too everything many because of money. <laughs> Generally, it is. We haven't seen too many teams just totally fund their own stadiums. But the ones who have have basically done it that way. Um, and s most of those are recently as well, right? MetLife and SoFi, and then you have Gillette Stadium from back in the day that was also privately funded. I but I mean, SoFi is the model at this point. Yeah, I was just thinking last night. I'm like, man, I can't believe that like corporate greed is going to like kill a part of my city and then i was like oh corporate greed kills everything right yes exactly <laughs> i, like, it, I it should be able killed, to believe that it we were all, yeah. all things it, are it's already killed a lot of things um and not only sofi mm -hmm. is kind of the the model moving mm -hmm. forward but it's the closest tie to the walton Petter yep. group as well being so close uh to stan Kroenke, mm -hmm. there's a connection there yeah also uh stan Kroenke filled that stadium specifically for the 2026 world cup was one of the reasons that he wanted the new stadium. Mm -hmm. And now he Which can't stadium? even... Which stadium? Oh, no, the stadium. LA. Yeah. yeah, SoFi Stadium. Now SoFi can't even hold World Cup games because it's too narrow and it's not going to fill... Oh, yeah. that sucks. Yeah. Bro, um, are you kidding because me? Because they, they built that also, underground really quick, speaking of Stan Kroenke, we have one stadium that is out of town uh, for Colorado sports teams. How many Rapids games have you been to? Zero. 
People say they're fun, but I've never wanted to go that far. Okay. No, Case in point. They're fun. Yo, I've heard. It's, He's your person. I hear. To be fair, I don't think I'd yeah, have like, been to any if they were in Denver. Even get if they were in downtown, I think you would. If it was if it was at Coors Field, I could see like, oh, we're done with work. Shit, let's walk over. Maybe. I yeah. know I would. I, for me, it's, it's like, certainly way more difficult. Yeah, the thing is, like, I have to like, I'd have to start planning right now if I wanted to like go to a Rapids game this exactly. weekend. Exactly. Whereas uh, if I'm going to a Rockies game, sometimes the Rockies game first pitches at six ten. I decide I want to go to the game at five forty five. Exactly. That's where like I have season tickets. To and, be and fair, though, football games are apply, very. Different. It doesn't apply here, but I'm just telling you, it mm-hmm. takes a lot of the fun. At, like, it's not fun to to. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not fun to get to a Rapids game. It's fun to be at a Rapids game. Yeah. Also, like I, the Broncos tailgate, you can just show up even if you're not going to the game. You yep, can just go true. and do it. You're downtown. Go to Lodo. Go to the NVR bar right afterwards and watch the game. It's, a great it's really hard to do it when you're all the way out in Commerce City. To mm-hmm. ask me from experience, I can't just go to the tailgate for fun and then come right home and watch a game. Like, yeah, and I'm sure hard. they would have places that you could technically go down and tailgate and then go out to a bar yep. that's in that area. That's not the same. No. And I have Av season tickets. Last year, lived in Denver, went to so many games. This year, I've been in Westminster. I have not been to many games at all. Mostly a sell ticket because it's just such a hassle. Yep. And that would open up the whole uh, yeah. PSL conversation. We can maybe have that another day. Yeah. Um, Pumpkin oh, spice lattes? I wish. Those. That's what we were oh, talking damn. about. It's a weird one. It's kind of fun. It's it's just unavoidable. It's They're going to make you yeah. pay for the right <sighs> to pay them. Yeah. Yeah, Which definitely. is just such a good biz- business opportunity oh, yeah. if you can get it. Yeah, it's just, it, it's exploitive in my opinion of, mm-hmm. and all of this is really just exploiting the fact that everyone wants to go to the games and they're going to do it regardless mm-hmm. of, you know, whether um, they want to or not. What I will say is you want to talk about incomplete, you want to talk about Rocky Mountain mm-hmm. Thunder, you want to talk about home field advantage, Zach. When you make it impossible, not impossible, extremely difficult for mm-hmm. blue collar people to afford going to your mm-hmm. games, you directly hurt your home field advantage. It's just yep. that is just facts. And that's where a definitely. whole bunch of seats definitely helps. And the the other side of that, you know, PSLs are really weird and complicated. But it's also true that I think the average price for a PSL when the Ravens built their stadium was like three fifty. The resale value ten years later was like five grand. And so because you have the rights to them, again, it's not a great deal. And there was a question on there that's, you know, would it, how much would it impact your decision to buy a personal seat license if, like the Warriors or like the Rams, you get refunded for that payment when they move out of the stadium? So, so then it holds its value throughout. And so it is kind of complicated. And in some ways, it probably saves the taxpayers from paying for something that, you know, the people who go to the games probably care more about. Yeah. So, so there are, there's pros and cons. It, I just saw several people last night saying, like, I inherited my season yeah. tickets from my grandparents. Um, like I can afford them right now. If this were to happen, I yep. wouldn't be able to afford them. And that shit sucks. It, it does really suck. And it is it it is it is really tough for fans, but it's also kind of fun economics wise. But getting back to the other thing I was saying about SoFi, like that is the model. Like that is what you probably want to do if you're the Waltons. It's the the one thing that could stop them from going out to the airport or whatever and building this massive complex is a massive bid from the city. And if the city says, we'll pay for whatever, half the stadium, I mean, that's why Allegiant Stadium is in Vegas because the city paid 40% of the money for them to stick right there because it, they just want to build up the strip and don't want them to go outside and expand or do whatever else. Typically, that's not a good deal for the city. And if you're bidding enough to convince them to not go build their own mega complex 40 minutes from here, it's probably not good economically for the city. For the city or the team uh, slash ownership, I mean. Potentially. I mean, if you're saving so much money that that whatever, if you're paying half, then that billion and a half, two billion up front might be worth the 20 years you spend out there. So if it's completely privately funded Mm -hmm. and they're just building a stadium, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's probably going to be tough to recoup that money uh, Mm -hmm. in in even a long-term sense. But if you're building an entire complex and then you're building hotels, you're building residences, you're building bars, you're building venues, and you own all of that, 
and you get 100% of the profits back, mm -hmm. uh, then I think it's it's smart on the ownership side to fund it all up yeah. front. And I think that's what they would do. They're, they're not just going to build a stadium out by the airport and just be a stadium. No, no it, it's going to be a complete entertainment and district. Uh, and so that's just why I think that that that's what they're going to do. I agree. That is definitely most likely. But the one kicker is, I mean, they'll, they'll go through all the numbers and figure out how much money they'd make and what the risk is that people would only show up on game days and that place winds up pretty dead for most of the week. It, it, they'll figure out all that stuff and then the city will probably come in with a bid that says, if you stick at this same spot, we will give you whatever amount. And it just depends on where those numbers fall out. Yeah. And I think you're right. That's what they're going to end up doing. And, you know, the people who live in Hounds Ranch and say Denver is too dangerous even though they never come <laughs> here are gonna love it and you yep. know tom who inherited his house from his parents on federal yep. got their season tickets that they've had since 1960 yep. isn't going to be able to go to the games anymore and you're going to have a soulless experience um I don't think it's going to be that. I think that is worst case scenario, obviously, mm -hmm. and I think that's you cert by moving the the stadium out there, you certainly risk that more than keeping it where it is with ticket prices staying the same and, and having no uh, PSLs. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's going to be that extreme. Um, I, I think that <clears throat> you're going to lose some fans, but I think it's going to be a very, very, very small percent of fans because Broncos fans are diehard ticket prices have raised in the mm -hmm. past now also having to pay a thousand dollars or something on top of that or you said 350 dollars i think so the rams the for typical reserve seat it was 1000 to 5000 for the raiders it was 500 was the lowest price so i mean if it's 500 per i think seat. you're gonna lose a fraction of a percent of season ticket yeah. holders but ryan what you're saying yeah. is it worst case scenario is a doomsday scenario is something that if you're thinking about this you have to factor in and see, mm -hmm. but the Broncos in their surveys are trying to get this information. They are saying, how much would you pay for this? Would you yep. actually do this if you're saying it? I, yeah. and, and, and I don't think it's as dooming as you think. I just don't trust people who I know their only interest is in money uh, to make sure that they keep the soul. I don't like, mm -hmm. I just don't trust. Them. Uh, and just talk to people who, who have gone, gone to Jerry World. They'll tell you, yeah, it was cool. It was just soulless. I don't think $100 this, pizzas. I don't think this ownership group so far, it's been less than a year, has done something to where I've lost their confidence in that. I do think they're care to, they care about winning. I do think they care um, about the Denver Broncos fans. I do think they care about uh, how this city views the team. I At least now, they yep, could totally definitely. ruin that. But right now, they still have my trust. For me, they have to earn my trust. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, like Pat Bowen, that is a person who I trusted. He earned that trust from mm -hmm. Broncos fans and from this community. I, they haven't done anything to lose my trust. Mm -hmm. They just haven't done anything to earn it yet. And, and that's where, I mean, if they're just typical, rational people, they're probably just going to do whatever makes the most financial sense. Like that is kind of the baseline. The baseline isn't, oh, this would be good for the city. Let's let's cut our profits a bit to to do what the fans will really like. Like the normal, like economically rational person would say, okay, how much money can we get from the city? How much money can we get from the PSLs? What is the maximum amount that we could charge to get people into the game? What is the maximum amount we could get? Like it's all about profit maximization. And that is way more common among sports owners. But to be fair, I, I actually disagree with you, Ryan. I think there are things that, that, that they've already done. And mm -hmm. I disagree with what you said, Henry, about how it's, you know, number one priority is maximizing things, regardless of what they do with the stadium. They're investing $100 million into it mm -hmm. this offseason. They didn't need to. Was, did you ever look at the scoreboard and complain about it? I still no. thought it was one of the biggest and best in sports, mm -hmm. uh, honestly. And they decided to come in, and they completely took it down already. They're going to build a new one up. They're investing $100 million just this offseason into it. So mm -hmm. uh, and it's things that they did not have to do. The stadium is not old and decrepit and falling apart in the worst in sports it's certainly not the best it, by, by no means at all it's not like they had to do this stuff they didn't have to pay four hundred thousand yeah. dollars for a new field before that final game that's i know a very very small mm -hmm. fraction of money com compared to what they have but the hundred million dollars is an investment for sure for sure yeah. yeah and i i totally like there's no reason to think that they are only in it for the money like if anything i agree they probably have pointed toward it is about like we want to go in football games. It's fun for our family to have a team. We want to like, like it is when you have that much money, it can just be all about fun. Number one, which is kind of crazy to think about. But 
when you're talking about building a $5 billion stadium and a city all around it and all that sort of stuff, as soon as you start talking about like, does that cost $20 billion to do all that stuff? That's where you might get into, I mean, again, you expect yeah, any 20 person. 20 billion is pretty ridiculous though. I yeah. mean, so if I was like over a budget at $5 billion, yeah. but if you I don't say, think it's 20 billion now. But if you say five for a stadium, 15 to buy all the so land and was, do all the other so stuff. SoFi was all of that, though. Oh, the, the five bill wasn't just... Theirs wasn't too big, though. Wasn't like if, just the stadium. It was everything around it, too. Yeah, but again, like, we've looked at the area. It's not it's not as big as you think, but maybe it isn't that much. But whatever it is, any 95, 99% of people would say, okay, I'm spending this much money. How do I get the most out of this? And again, they have given us no reason to think they're going to just money grab and do that sort of thing. But that is kind of the baseline for any person. I just think that they've so far yeah. have proven that that's not the case. The stakes get so much higher though. Yep, for sure. And right. and the other thing about staying downtown both of those points. that we haven't touched on is just the river mile with the Cronkies building up everything from whatever, from Spear on the other side of the of Ball Arena all the way down to Colfax along the river. And I mean, they're they're developing all that, and it's supposed to take another whatever fifteen twenty years to actually complete. So who knows what that looks like? It doesn't seem like the Broncos have too much space to do many changes of their own. A lot of that is owned by the stadium district, so they have to. There's a bunch of hoops they have to grow through. But with the Cronkies really trying to build this up into kind of the sports mecca and eventually run everything from Coors Field all the way down to the Broncos Stadium, you do wonder if the Broncos find a way to be a part of it. And the reason you'd think it'd be tough for them is just because there isn't a whole bunch of land that they own themselves that they could profit from. We're talking about a lot of money here. Yep. Oh yeah. If you want to make some money yourself, check out our friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Use the promo code DNVR to get $200 in bonus bets after you place a $5 bet. So if you're going to be watching basketball tonight, you want to place a $5 bet after using the promo code DNVR to sign up at DraftKings Sportsbook. They're going to give you $200 in bonus bets that you can use right away on Alabama to win tonight on underdogs. Guys, three for four yesterday. This thing just keeps rolling. Yep. Underdogs, My 16 goodness. and a half units up Woo. since the start of the tournament. So is it going to be three or four again today? Hope so. I'll take two or four considering the odds. Um, are they, uh, yeah, the odds are even more distant today. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm, and I've been going crazy. Like everything's hitting. Like we have all that stuff. You guys stuff. almost jinxed Gonzaga last night, by the way. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was so Give me a break. There are no jinxes so with that. Um, but I would have been jinxed if, if we believe in the jinx, I would have been jinxing Hank, not you. Well, I took Cause that. it was Hank who said it. I know. And I was, I, I was, been I was sec- celebrating his win before yes. it happened. I would have been, me you too. know, the baby in the car inhaling your cigarette smoke. <laughs> wow. I, uh, that game was wild. I, I took them again when they were down 13 at halftime. I also had a separate bet on them parlayed with Kansas state parlayed with Rory McIlroy to come back in his match and win when he was down three Crazy. through six. So that one was plus 500. Everything's hitting. I, t- I talked about the round robin. So I have the eight games this week. Also with the Avs win that one game with the Buffs to win that last game. So everything's just like, I'm, I'm five and one in a 10 leg round robin. And so I'm just racking in the money, that raking in the money. It has been a big day. And now I've been betting on Rory again. Rory's up two there you through go. six. I, um, I've kind of taken the opposite approach as you. Now that I'm in this mindless betting world, mm. I haven't made any other bets. Oh. I just log on. If there's March Madness games, I bet on all the dogs, and then I put my account away. Wow. And then I check it at the end of the night, and I make money. Huh. It's, it's a kind of like, I don't know, buying early Google stock or something. Yeah. So That's what I felt like we did. Mindless profits. <laughs> kind of in a tough spot today, though, because I was 0 for 4 yesterday Oof. um it will if i had bet i decided i was gonna take a i was mm. just gonna go big on alabama okay. this weekend so i gave out my DraftKings pick earlier this week it's minus 140 over at DraftKings for alabama to win these next two games so so i'm going hard on that stayed away hard yesterday on. thankfully because i was 0 for 4 ryan went three for four yesterday but we're both on bama today so well, i hope it's not your one miss i am on Bama in the in sense a that I way. think they're going to win, okay. but I'll still yeah. be okay. betting against that. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's true. So, well, I hope it. I, I hope they win. But if you want to join us, go over to DraftKings Sportsbook. Use the promo code DNVR and get two hundred dollars in bonus bets. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call one 4700 And if you wait, have we done this drawing? 
We did the we drawing. Did the drawing? So how about Breck Brew? So we're going to... To anybody who potentially won that drawing, I hope that you really enjoy the gift that Breckenridge Brewery gave you. Going to have the time of your life. And if you didn't win, then hopefully you entered because I'm sure there'll be another and that's another opportunity for you to go get great Also, seats. we have a takeover tomorrow, a Jokic Giannis takeover. I have, oh. I have friends in town, so I'm just hoping like seats on the bus don't sell so I can reach out to Spencer tomorrow and be like, hey, is there like eight seats left on the bus? I'll no, give you like I half the money. I talk to him today because I had a friend reach out to me saying they have a box at the game. Oh. Um, so it's kind of one of those like, oh, if you're there, mm. then you have a box. You have, uh, <laughs> do you have eight tickets to that box? Probably not. Damn. That would have been really convenient for me. But uh, yeah, Breckenridge Brewery is awesome. I'm going to be drinking a bunch of Breckenridge beers tomorrow night at the game. Um, that's going to be a fun one. Those tickets are really expensive too. I think like just to get in is like 117 before fees. Sheesh. I mean, it's a it's a massive matchup. Jokic and Giannis. Might be cheaper that to, to go through the takeover then? We, I don't think they mm. sell tickets to the game. No, our takeover. Yeah, I don't think Oh, that. we didn't do... No, it's just bus. No, 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 no. <laughs> the takeover is the whole package. It's bus, I, tickets to the game, a beer on the bus. This wasn't a takeover, though. It was yeah. A party bus. Uh, yeah. Okay. There we go. So that's yeah. That's where I was wrong. But that's where I was like, hey, if they wind up not quite selling everything out, I might swoop in and buy some of the discount. But that's a conversation for later. A um, lot of Breckenridge brews tomorrow. Some Breckenridge root brews tonight. Tomorrow, t- tonight, I'm not really sure. Mon- or the, not Montana. Colorado women's team plays in the tournament. I haven't decided if I'm sticking around for that, but there is a watch party yeah, here. Yep. Come down to the bar. I've never seen Caitlin Clark play a game. Like I've only seen the highlights, and it's just a shame that my first experience watching her will make me hate her for the rest of <laughs> her life and mine. Yeah, it's kind of like Steph Curry in that series where yeah. he like became Steph Curry yeah. against the Nuggets. Yeah, yeah. it's like, oh, yep, don't like him ago. now. But it is wow. a shame that you're going to see her have one of her worst games of her career. There we go. There we go. You watch a full game. All right, yeah. you see you dogs. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Only like plus two hundred or something though. Yeah, kind of surprising. Less than they were against uh, Duke. Duke. Yeah. I yeah. think it's because Duke has the name. And it was at Cameron Indoor. Right. 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 That right. is true. But I mean, like what? She averages twenty-seven points per game. How could you only be a That's wild? Well, how could Colorado only wild. be plus two hundred when she's averaging twenty-seven points per game in college basketball? That is insane. That's like that's like forty got, to forty-five yeah. points a game in, got stoppers. in like the it's, WNBA. They do got have stoppers. stoppers. They do have stoppers. So yeah, that's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna be drinking some beers if I stick around. Maybe one of these for free. Um, and hopefully we'll see you there or maybe tomorrow or whenever else because we've got all these Breckenridge beers here. You can use the beer locator at breckbrew.com to find them wherever you are too. Breaking news. Breaking yes. news. New survey. Denver Broncos have signed someone. And someone that I've referenced over and over again about how Sean Payton can just turn people into good receivers. Marquez Callaway. Wow. Who was an undrafted receiver in 2020. And then in 2021, Sean Payton's final year with the Saints, he was their leading receiver, almost 700 yards on 46 catches and six touchdowns. They've signed some guys in the past, including yesterday, Tony Jones Jr., Mm -hmm. Former Saint, of course. Sean Payton just bringing his guys over. Tony Jones, I can't sell you on like being a productive guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably just a, a backup. Might make the team as a third guy, as a special teams bad guy. Bad news for Latavius Murray, probably. Yeah, more bad news for probably. Latavius. But Callaway, he's a guy who you can make an argument that he's going to have a role on this team. Is he going to yep. be their number one receiver? No, but... Could you convince me, and could Sean Payton convince me, if they move on from Jerry Judy, if they move on from Cortland Sutton, that this is a guy that they feel comfortable with enough with stepping up and being their third receiver? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Sean Payton has has proved that he can make Marquise Callaway uh, a, a good enough receiver, or Marquez mm-hmm. Callaway, a good enough receiver in uh, his system. Mm-hmm. So I absolutely think that this is a significant signing. There's definitely a chance. I think that he fits in pretty perfectly in the wide receiver four job. Like without looking at the special teams, because that's like the one piece that you wonder about. But when you look at Jerry and Cortland and Tim, like there's a clear number three, that number four spot. So he played 14 games last year, 158 yards. Year before that was the big one. Without Sean, though. Definitely. Last year was without Sean. Definitely. But again, kind of like a, again, probably their wide receiver five, wide receiver four right around there. Um, year before that was 698. He was our number right, wide receiver number one in terms of yards. In, in terms bad. of in terms of production. Oh yeah, it, mm-hmm. it's it's really bad. But mm-hmm. Henry, he could easily be a number wide receiver number three. 
And if, if you're banking on what he did that season. But the, but the thing is... with Sean Payton again. So you look at those numbers, and I was just going through this last night because of the K.J. Hamler injury. So last year, just I just looked at the AFC West because I'm not looking at every team. Uh, so the number four receiver for the Chiefs that they brought in the season, Sky Moore, second-round pick. Number four receiver for the Chargers um, when they started the season, Jalen Guyton, who had 950 total yards over the two previous seasons combined. Um, the Raiders' number four receiver, Keelan Cole, a thousand yards combined over the previous two seasons. And so when you look at Marquez Callaway, and again, it's crazy. I was just writing about this last night. He has uh, a little over 800, 850 or so yards over the last two seasons. Again, more disparity for him than those other two, but he does fit it statistically that number four role perfectly. Well, and he, I, I think both of you guys can be correct here in the sense of he could be your number three if you need him to be. You make that exactly. wide receiver trade and he becomes your third receiver. If not, he's cert- I think it's fair to say he's certainly an upgrade over Kendall Hinton as your number four. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, yeah. I'm I, just saying I think he could bump up to number three. Um, and Even Sean with Payton. no roster changes? No, no, no. Okay. With, yeah. with a roster change. But it's pretty clear the Broncos have been trying to kind of find a yep, guy too. to take over if they were to trade one of mm-hmm. these guys. Adam Thielen, uh, Alan Lazard. Mm-hmm. Now they, I think they got that guy where they're comfortable enough yep. with. And they've, they've just needed, they've needed receiver depth. This, again, just fits that role perfectly. And for what it's worth, the the receiver who played the fourth most snaps for the Broncos in every game last year, on average, that was 16% of the offensive snaps. So that's what you expect your number four receiver going into the game. Then you throw in one of the top three misses a game here or there, and then that bumps up. So there, if you're number four, there is a role and for it, you. It's funny because I think of Sean Payton and I think of like four and five wide yeah. sets yeah. being a big part of it. Yeah. And yet they just added a big blocking, you know... Uh, tight end and uh, and the way they're they've made moves makes you think we're going to be seeing a lot more like 22 personnel yeah but i think what Mm -hmm. you're going to get with sean is typically let's say another coach was going to run a a lot of big sets um Mm -hmm. probably jerry judy or Cortland sutton would be on the field 100 percent of snaps but i think now you could see them doing more rotations with mm-hmm. those guys on the outside and a fourth receiver yep. seeing a lot more playing time than a typical fourth receiver would. yeah i mean jerry last year i think it was three games all season he played 90 percent or more of the snaps in a game so again like there's plenty for these other guys to eat up also, and we've said it over and over be again. a lot different with sean i think it's going to be True. even more rotation also, i agree a dude with the last name callaway which is sick mm-hmm. and then wearing number one like there was just no way he could fail <laughs> also here's a dumber stat he's 24 little jordan humphrey's 24 montrell's 24 jalen virgil's 24 brandon johnson is 24 and uh jerry's still 23 i think but i can't just google jerry that's not gonna work but yeah a lot of 24 year olds everybody's 24 young that is young um, it is young to pair with a veteran quarterback so guys will marquez callaway be in the top 16 nope Let's do this. Let's get into some March Madness. This is going to be fun. We're going to revisit this over the next week, 10 days or so, and we're going to have you guys vote on this. We made a decision after the show yesterday. It's going to be over at DNVR underscore Broncos on Twitter. We want as many. is absolved from all anger that happens about this. Somebody gets pissed off. That also means he doesn't get any 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 credit credit for it. Yeah, Um, yeah, here, can we uh, (laughs) change the bracket, actually, to the most recent one we had, please? Um, Thank you for that. Um, And uh, let's... Should we just go first and put together who... uh, I love that. What? (laughs) Because we had this conversation yesterday about what is it? Is it favorite or best? And we went with best. Yeah. So this is... 100% 100% skill-based or uh, ability-based. And uh, there's a couple of things. I Really, just one thing we need to decide before this is are we doing I, – I think we're doing it How the, who the players are right now going into the 2023 season. So, like, I'm not going to be accounting Russell yep. Wilson's Pro Bowls that uh, he's yeah. had. Okay. Um, I'm not building a Hall of Fame. Well, are you, who are the best players for a game that's played today, tomorrow, okay. th- this season? But are you, like – Thinking Russ is that was just who he is. No, I th- you okay. you can, you can factor that in. Okay. Um, but but I'm not be. just saying he's a, what a he's a Hall of Famer. You know what a weird one he is for this. He's a I've very about a lot very of weird one. And I, for some reason, I hadn't thought about him yet. A very weird one. I have no idea. Where um, one more thing that we need to talk about with this though: How do we handle injuries? Because personally, I want to use Javante in this 
assuming he's healthy. Cool. But that's not how he is right now, obviously. That's how I prefer it. What do you guys think? Let's yeah. just assume everybody's okay, healthy. Okay, so everyone's healthy. KJ's yep. healthy. Yep. Tim's um, back to his old self. Who? Tim Patrick. Yeah. Timmy, Timmy, yeah, Timmy yeah, Pat yeah. Pats. Okay. Yeah. Um, so how they are healthy going into this season. Yep. Should we throw out some names? Should we try to build the 16? Should we just go build it down from 1 to let's, 16 right now? Let's start at 1, start and then when one, things get tough, we, might, we can reevaluate. Start at 16, I think. Okay, so okay. So 1, Pats are 10. Yes. It's easy. Well, let's move Pats, along. Pats are 10 is very easy. He is our number mm-hmm. 1 seed, and I don't think anyone's going to disagree. I, some, Someone might, but I don't think many people will disagree. <laughs> uh, number 2, Justin Simmons. I think this is the right thing to do. It has to be. Um, I don't think it has to be. Really? If you're saying there could be debate on Pats or Tan, there's definitely debate uh, here. Sure. Um, but I am comfortable doing Justin Simmons. I am too. Yep. My debate, I guess, would probably give away who I think should be number three, but my debate would be... Um, well, let's move on to three. ...on skill. Uh, and I think the most talented player on the team behind Pat Sertan is Jerry Judy. But... We're not. This isn't talented. This isn't yep. the DNVR Broncos talent bracket. Uh-huh. This is the best. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you're still you're comfortable giving it to to Simmons over. Over who? Jerry. Who you just I am talking com- about? Yes, I am comfortable giving Justin Simmons number two because he has proven it at this level time and time and again. Agree. Agree. Okay. So Justin Simmons gets our number two. The secondary raking so far. You arguing Jerry for three? I want to look at this just to make sure that I'm not forgetting someone big. Um, I legitimately think we're in a range where like Zach Allen starts to figure into the conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, Would Draymond Jones be right here as well? Yeah, yeah. probably. Uh, I'm looking around at starters. So let me throw out some names that that, okay. that I'm thinking could be in this because I agree there's some names. I think Ben Powers could be yep. in this conversation right now. I think Javante Williams, healthy, yeah. could be in this conversation yep. right now. I absolutely think Jerry Judy is in this conversation right now. To me, off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone else that needs to be in this conversation. I I agree. I mean, I have I think this is a wide group. I think this is one where it can go in a, diff, a bunch of diff, different directions. So I think I Javante, need, yep. Zach Allen, Jerry, I also think Randy Gregory. Like if Zach Allen's there, I think Randy. Again, we're assuming health. If we're assuming health, I think I'm would you take Randy or Zach Allen? I'd probably take Randy. Man. I'm getting a guy. To me, it's oh, like. so hard. I, I'm yeah. assuming oh, like yeah. health to start the season, but <laughs> I, I know, know what they are. But we're assuming the health. The rest of the season. Yeah. If we're assuming health, we can think on that. I also think you've got four offensive linemen so who I still like, think are just bang, 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 bang. I don't even know what order I'd put them. I think you have Garrett to. Garrett Bowles to me is not in this conversation. I think you have to think of this as it's one game and this player is healthy. Okay. Who do yeah. you want the most? Then, yeah, Randy's in this conversation. I agree. Man. I know this is where it gets. Wild. Again, like, what do I have? I have all four of those linemen. I've got Zach Allen, that's five, Javante, Jerry, and Randy. So that's eight. And you so can put them pick. in any order, and I'd be happy. This? Who is number one? Ryan, I think you were making the case for Jerry at first. Yeah, I'm just having a hard time with... Also, I think we're taking positional value out of this. Yes. Um, obviously. I'm just trying yes. to think, like, am I overvaluing Jerry because I'm so confident in his ability? Yeah, that's fair. Um, so I think you could definitely make the case to move him down mm-hmm. a slot or so. For a guy who's been more consistent at this level. The first person, the first name I mentioned was Ben Powers, and I'm going to make the argument for him here because I think he was a top three guard in the NFL last year. And with this, that's kind of how I'm viewing it. He was one of the best at his position, um, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to weigh a lot on last year. I was just going to say, though, that was easily the best year of his career. Without a doubt. Um, and so it's... It, you could make the same case about him not doing it consistently at this level that you could as Jerry. True. J- Wait, you're saying Jerry's been more consistent? No, no, no I'm oh. saying they have that. You could make the same case against them of like Jerry has been more consistent though. I mean, he's like in the 700s before, but yeah, I mean it's close. It's the yeah. same thing. Jerry has not been elite like Ben Powers though. Yeah. He's had elite games. He has. Not yeah. elite full over yeah. a 17 game season. Um. I'm not hell bent on him. Who, Henry, who, who are you making yeah. the case for? I figured out my offensive line order. I go Bulls, Powers, McGlinchey, Miners, and if you flipped Bulls it, I'd be happy. 
Um, I think I'd go Javante. Mm. I think I'd go Javante out of all of them. I think Javante is better what he does than what Jerry is what he does. Who do you guys think should be number three? If you're tuning in on YouTube, let us know in the comments section. Also, hit us with some likes. We'd really appreciate it. And subscribe to the podcast as well, whether you're on the podcast side or whether you are mm-hmm. watching on YouTube. Um, man. Again, Randy's just tough. Randy's insanely tough. Like, I, if you said I, he's number I just, two. I can't okay. do Randy because... I'm, <sighs> I, it has to be, but, the, but we're igno- we have to be consistent with ignoring injuries. I think for me, it comes down to. I think what I'm, in- I think what I'm willing to ignore injury wise, though, and you guys can tell me if this isn't fair, is like current injuries that they're on right now. Yeah, that's Javante, though, right? Yes. But, so I'm willing to ignore that. Oh. Randy Gregory doesn't have an injury right now where I'm saying like, oh, let's just pretend he's healthy. Oh. Injuries just always been part of his. Okay, here's game. how. Here's how I want to put it. And I think this can help us break the tie. You get the entire Broncos roster, but you have mm-hmm. to take one of these guys out. Mm-hmm. That's positional value. Yeah, it's positional value. Don't like it. How are we ever going to break no, this, this tie? No, this is why it's so hard. <laughs> what I was just going to say is, who would you rather play a game without the least? Uh, Jerry, thing. Javante, or Randy Gregory? Or Ben Powers? You know what? I say, well, shoot. We've seen some Javantes, and then, of course, we get a Ben Powers in here. Um, I think it's Jerry. I think Javante is a better running back than Jerry's receiver. I'm leaning Javante. All right. Okay, cool. Uh, just There's because Javante. of the chat. I think the chat helped uh, yep. put it over. Um, so we're going uh, Javante Williams, number three. Shows how important his health is. And then you put mm-hmm. not positional value, but what the head coach of this team wants to do. You running the ball, you see how important he is now, and how important that running game is. So. Those like angry runs feel so far away. I know. Yeah. I was thinking today, like we should do a podcast about if everything just goes well. It's like Randy's healthy, Javante's back to start the year. We got more. We got a lot more on this podcast, though. Who are we, we going do. for? Can we go Jerry here? Now I think Randy I Gregory upset. does enter Ugh. the conversation though he, with For would, one game, would you rather have Randy Gregory or Bradley Chubb? Randy Gregory. And where would Bradley Chubb rank in here? He'd probably be right around here. Exactly. He would be like five. I <sighs> think when I think of man, I mean Jerry did finish the year so well, but before Randy got hurt last year, what was that four game stretch he was on to start the season? It was like three and I mean, sacks. Yeah, three and a half sacks, two forced fumbles or something, yeah, two, two fumble recoveries. Or He's something incredible like that. when like, he plays. Man. But it just depends on how we account for the fact that he never plays. I mean, I would say Randy was he was borderline elite for four oh, yeah. games when he played. Was so Jerry, was Jerry. No, was was Jerry <sighs> borderline elite though? Jerry was great. Yes. But he didn't bat a thousand were, for the season. Were his stats that's not you can't give uh, Randy bonus points for playing less games. But he always looks good. So if you just want him for one game, who's the better football player? Like who gives you the Pro Bowl performance? I just want to know what Jerry's pace was in the final half of last year. Like was it elite? Because I know it was really yeah. good. Um, so when do we want to start Jerry? When did he really turn it on? We want to go with the ninety-six last yard five performance. Games. Last five games. That's okay, where I so. Do it. Um, last five games, yeah, I mean, 1,500 yards it is what yeah. that would have averaged out and to. Three yeah. TDs That's also, every five games, so... Yep. Um, it would have been 10. 10 touchdowns. 1,500 yards and 10 touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. And, and Court's first f- first five games would have been like a 1442 pace or something. Um, okay, so who am I looking up? <laughs> I'm looking up Randy Gregory. Um, let's see what his per game was as well. Uh, yeah, yep. and He's to me, I, I saw I had this big tier. DJ was the first one I cut from it. Okay. So again, like I get, I, if you want Bowles, Powers, McGlinchey, Miners here, I'd take any of them, and that that's my order. But they're all right next to each other. Um, and with, okay, Gregory, in the first four games he played, it would have been a pace of eight sacks, mm-hmm. thirty quarterback hits, which is insane, yeah. and eight yeah. tackles for a loss. I'm fine going Jerry. Let's go. All right, let's do Jerry. Um. That was a tough fight. Is Randy here at five, or do we need to bring other people in? Randy <laughs> wasn't as I mean dominant these, as I thought, so I'm I'm willing to yeah. talk about other people. These offensive the linemen. thirty quarterback hits is pretty dominant. That means you are making you are creating havoc. And all the peripheral stats of like the pass rush win rate, like he's just blowing all the other Broncos out of the water. 
Yeah. And the two forced fumbles. But Zach Allen, I mean, this is a guy that yeah. had literally 20 tackles or 20 quarterback hits from an interior position, yeah. which is even more difficult. Did it, not just a he pace. actually did it and only did mm-hmm. it in 13 games. So you want to bring it out to a pace. It's probably right around Ex- just yeah. under 30. And he actually did it yep. for 13 games compared to four. I have Gregory just a hair in front of Allen. But again, like, I'm going, I, I, I can't ignore. I'm going availability. <sighs> okay. And uh, which I'm not factoring in. So there we go. <laughs> I, I understand the kind of thing here. Um, Randy yeah. Gregory. I'd make Randy Gregory is more talented than Zach Allen. Uh, easily. Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm not saying that's a tiebreaker. I'm just trying to <laughs> no, you're right, go you're through right, my right. thoughts. Right. Why I was saying, wait, 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 though, is I need to bring Ben Powers back into this conversation. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, after I, I got caught up in the numbers and stuff, <laughs> forgot about the offensive line. Ben Powers elite last year. We knocked him down for not having the consistency year in and year out for not being number three. I understand that. An elite offensive lineman last year. I'm not saying, Mm -hmm. let's remember a couple of years ago when he, no, just Mm -hmm. last year. Not just one of the best guards, one of the best offensive linemen. He should go here. Man. I'm behind it. I think I think we probably should have had an offensive lineman by now. I would have just pretended to take Henry's side if I knew how hard this was going to be. (laughs) <laughs> I, I was like, yes, this is too controversial. Sorry, but see, guys. it's, wow. it's going to be a lot easier when you're just looking at two guys next to each other. I've never been more upset that Randy Gregory didn't play last year. This is the peak. This is this is the worst I've felt about him not playing. Because you, you it's so inconvenient. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I If I had to pick one here, I would go Zach Allen. I like Zach. In terms of Broncos free agent signings, I'm higher on Zach Allen than Ben Powers. Um... I think that's fair. I do think that's fair. Who's I would take Gregory over player? him. You think Zach that's Allen what, is? That's kind of why, yeah. That's, I think he is. <sighs> I mean, I'm fine doing that. We got to get Ben Powers in <laughs> okay. next. Can I give you that but trade-off? What, what, what about Randy? <laughs> Randy can't be two Randy. spots on Zach Allen. That's crazy. Yes, he can. I don't think so. Yeah, one guy is I think just he's better. productive all the time. The other and one's guy productive is productive when he's on the field. In, in spurts. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, the 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 goalposts just have to move, or else we could never get anything done. See, I, I don't think I, I should have specified it, but I didn't think about it. Is in like being healthy right now and who they are. Yeah, but we're talking about in a one game sample. No, I, I think mean, we're thinking about we were, like over this year, twenty twenty three. Well, that just changes everything. Not it really. Does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Javante's a running back. He's probably going to get hurt. Um. <laughs> Nobody knows you're here. <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> we can we can go Zach Allen, but I think it should be Ben Powers. I think it has to be Gr- I, Gregory. Well, yeah, we, don't have, we don't have to go with my choice. What if, let's get Powers out there. Powers. Oh, but see, I don't want Powers, Allen, Gregory, and then the next lineman. Because Powers is not that much better. We're in a weird place here. Also, when you get a four, five, and six, you're off into the face. And the lot. No. Ah. Allen also is kind of Remember, we're going to let year. the people choose the winners True. of these. So I think Definitely. the most important thing is getting the right 16 in. Yep. And so what not are we working on so, right now? Not being so Number far five? off. Five. So that's going to be in a four. F- oh, no, it's not like a. No, it's a one, two, three, no don't think about matchups. Don't no, think about no, matchups. That's, that's not what you can that's do. That's cheating. That's cheating. Yeah. That is corrupt. Right, I, <laughs> don't be corrupt. <laughs> like, I just felt like a oh Zach Allen, Randy Gregory matchup would be fun. Um, oh, and CC saying it's hard to find five more guys on this roster more talented than Randy Gregory. This is not it's talent to find three. based. This is how good to find they two. are right now. Yeah, it exactly. Like, Talent wise, yeah. Randy's three. Uh, okay. Randy's in the top three for sure. Um, mm, who would be who would Pat, be above Justin, him? Jerry, then Randy. Pat, no, uh, Justin no, probably Justin's not, down. not as talented as Randy. Gregory. He's very talented. Randy Gregory is built by a what football we, making god. Ran, no talent, talent. But, talent. But, this isn't worth it. You're talking about physical, like talent. His, yes, we're talking talent. No, Look, but what I'm saying is like, yes, he's he's tall and strong and fast. He's built and out quick of, and he, bends he's like, like a, the ideal that, that's outside great for linebacker. Him. And yes. Justin Simmons is the ideal safety. He could be a tick faster. Do you know there's a little bit stronger? He's, he, no, just just is incredibly <laughs> talented. <laughs> but it's Randy Gregory. All right. Okay, we, we don't have time for Doesn't talent. Matter. We don't have time. Wasn't for Randy talent. Gregory like a top five talent? I actually in had the a draft. huge argument with my friend the other day out, about yeah. what Look at him. talent means. So we could get into that. <laughs> no, whole we thing. could not. We'll do this. We'll do a talent one after we finish this one. Okay. Um, <laughs> 
Powers, Gregory, um, Al. Yeah, Powers, Gregory, Allen are our next three, right? Yes. Ranked choice. Let's all just do it. I'll go. I'll go Gregory, Allen, Powers. I'll go Allen, Gregory, Powers. Uh, damn, I'm gonna go Powers, <laughs> Allen, Gregory. Okay, all right. So what does Alan... that mean? That's literally that we just did the exact opposite. <laughs> no, because you put the Gregory, Allen two, you put Allen two, and I put Allen one, so that means he's one. Okay. There we go. Okay. So now we do Gregory and Powers. Who's first? Uh, I put Gregory one. No, I put Gregory two. You put him one. You put him uh, three. So that Powers. Two? Uh, you guys Powers, are I put worst. three. You put three. He put one. I that cannot believe two. an offensive lineman. Doesn't help. Well, so, well, we have two of us. Let's just vote. Powers, Powers or Allen? Who's or Powers or Gregory? Who's I go, better? I go Powers. I go Gregory. You guys are going off talent here. It's not fair. <laughs> no, I'm, going Gregory. No, no. I'm going Gregory. <laughs> okay, Gregory Powers. So we are through eight then. Seven. No, seven. We're through seven. Good job, guys. Okay. Um, Shit done. Just Hank, looking. Can, Hank can never make the argument that this Broncos offensive line can be the best in the NFL because if he makes that argument again, then he's saying that these other seven players are like also elite. But that's a whole but unit. I, again, like I think all four of these guys are basically equals. Like so, if you have a t- if you have a Madden boy. offensive line that all averages like eighty four, you're gonna have one of the best offensive lines. Exactly. In the league. Okay, <sighs> so here let, I feel like let's let's get some names flown here. I still have. I have like Bulls, McGlinchey, Miners, DJ Jones. I think this is where I probably get into Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick. Yeah. And I think that's probably the tier. I, I, maybe this is where you start the Russell Wilson conversation too. Oh man, Russ. What what do you do with Russ? I'm not ready to talk Russ yet after what I saw last year. I'll say that. So there's 16 seeds, right? Yeah. 16, yeah. So we're nearing halfway. I feel like Russ is just the perfect eight seed. You think he's a better football player than like Mike McGlinchey, Quinn Miners, Garrett Bowles? Like Madden rating tomorrow, you'd have him higher. Because I would not, and that's why I, I'm not considering him yet. But I think if you D- guys- I think DJ Jones needs to come in right here. I think he's a damn good football player. Okay. He uh, is. Now, obviously, at not a premium position, so we don't talk about him enough. He doesn't True. get as much love. But a ten million dollar guy at that position that lives up to it, I think. Uh, I I think is a damn good We're football get player. So I think for these oh, oh, I think yeah. he I think he is better than uh, <laughs> the offensive lineman. You do? Right. <sighs> There's just I you can't even call it a lack of production because he was he was solid, but there just wasn't much that DJ Jones DJ Jones and Ben Powers he's feel good. like um like the opposite uh, of each other to me. Like I think, DJ Jones yeah. is to the defensive line, what Ben Powers is to the offensive line. Agree. Really good at what he does. Not gonna like rack up stats and stuff like that. Two sacks, thirty-four but tackles, three tackles for loss. Not really gonna hurt you. Well, yeah, but that, that position on is play. one that you just can't look at stats yeah, though. And that's the thing is like a, That's why right at, I mean, doesn't he fit in right after Ben Powers then? If you're saying he's the equal? But see, I have that's how I, yeah, that's how I was. So I'm go I would go DJ right here. And I had Bulls, Powers, McGlin- I'll go Bulls here. Ryan? I'll go DJ. Okay. I'll go DJ. Okay. Um. So that was the eight seed, right? Yep. Yeah. Next here, one, someone else has to be the tiebreaker. Um. Then you better get your voting quicker. Um. I mean, okay, I'm so, fine with being the tiebreaker. So Ryan like said. Too much Ryan said Russell me. Wilson was the perfect eight seed. Should we put him as the nine seed? <clears throat> Make that decision after checking out our friends oh. over at Jive Hive, where oh, celebrate the weekend. If you're listening to us debate and you're like, oh my gosh, just get on with it. Pick someone. I don't care who it is. Maybe you need to check out our friends at Jive Hive. Calm you down a little bit. Enjoy the weed, Kent. Scan the QR code on our screen or go to jivehive.com. That's J-I-V-E-H-Y-V-E.com. Right now, they're delivering to Aurora, Greenwood Village, Monument, Fountain Valley, and various areas of El Paso County, but they continue to add. So make sure to check them out, even if you're not in that area, to see if they've expanded to you. And what Jive Hive does, they deliver weed straight to your door. That means not only convenient, but it's cheaper because they don't have stores that they have to pay for the rent for. No, they don't have that. They bring it straight to you. So check them out, jivehive.com. Tell us about our friends over at Bacchus and Shanker. Bacchus and Shanker, what do they do? Win. They Shank- win. That's what they win. This is just what they do. They win. Yep. Uh, we had Kyle Bacchus down here last week. Actually, a pretty cool dude. Um, really loves Denver sports and told his story, which was really just kind of inspiring to me. Uh, essentially, got with his guy Shanker, was like, hey, how much money can we pool together to start a business? And thought they were going to be a little higher. Did not have very much money. 
said, let's do it anyway. Um, created, you know, an LLC and, and started the whole thing uh, and, and have been super successful winning for Colorado families who have been injured in situations that weren't their fault. So if you've been injured in a situation that is not your fault, there's no better place to call uh, than Bacchus and Shanker at 303-222-2222. They will win your case. And the best part is you don't have to pay them until they win your case. That's how confident they are that they're going to get that done for you. All right. Who's number nine? Does Russell Wilson enter the conversation? Okay, so I'm going to bring a person in the conversation that has not been in yet that I believe now enters this really good at football Mm -hmm. conversation. Alex Singleton. And Josie Jewell. I'm not there yet. I'm not not saying they have to be here, but it's time for them to enter the fold. We've (laughs) got eight spots, and I think there's 12, 15 people that are in the conversation. Yep. So let's not make sure, let's make sure we don't forget any of them. Those two. Mm-hmm. Kawan very, Williams. Very important, yep. Uh, Mike McGlinchey, Garrett Bowles, Cortland Sutton, Greg Dulcich, the guy we haven't mentioned, Damari mm. Mathis, um, Baron Browning, mm. Quinn Minerts, probably not Samaj P. Ryan. No. Um, but an interesting one. Ryan's going to shut this down right away, but one that can't be ignored and has to be brought up, Brandon no. McManus. Brandon I McManus. He scores hey, the points for the Broncos. I'll say, I, I yeah. have the rest of my top 16 picked out. I know how I'm voting. We'll get there. He's, oh. on, he's on my board. Oh my he's on God. my board as of right now. Um, we got to at least talk it through. You I might be able to convince I think me. I mentioned all the names that I think need to be at least mentioned. Yep. Did I miss any? I don't have think we, so. Okay, we, we've mentioned all of them. Um, Dulcich. I'd said him. Okay, um, then we definitely did. We're going to name. We're going to leave some people off. Oh, yeah, definitely. Maybe we need a play-in round. Well, I was thinking, like, is it better to start eliminating people? Yeah, I I do think it is. Because what we don't want to do is get to 16 and we have seven guys that we need to decide for one spot. Yeah, but I mean, And then we're like, oh, well, maybe we should go back up to 15 and... um, But... uh, All right, let me help you guys out here. Brandon McManus has no business being on this list. He I mean, does, though. Not he does. only he does. is he a kicker. How many guys have they have been to a Pro Bowl? Not only is he a kicker, yeah. he was the worst kicker in the NFL last Bra- year. Brandon McManus is a 16 seed. I can't no, eliminate him. No, he's not. He's a, I can't he's eliminate him. He's a 16 him. seed. Brandon McManus is the school that, um, you know, from the super, super small C or small division that goes 30 and 3. Uh, he doesn't go 30 and, and 3, though. Well, and the last three, lo- the, the only three losses were the past three games. And so they they sneak in on no, that last no, one. No, 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 absolutely not. Um, you're yeah. like, you're gonna put Brandon. You'd rather have Brandon McManus on your team than uh, Damari Mathis on uh, my list as of now. Yeah. Once yeah, we get there, I w- I'll think I about too. it. But I would too. I, I as of now, I have him in front. It's tough. It's tough. But as of now, by a hair. I mean, that's next up to if me. If he was also no cheating, still sorry, pointed. really good. I would be okay with this. It's not yeah. just my anti-kicker bias. He was here. put in tough situations. There were some blocks in there. There was one ball that the was spun the wrong way. But see, I and there where does Brandon McManus partially. rank in terms of kickers going into this season? If he hit the market, he would be a top ten highest paid pick kicker. Not, probably not highest easily. paid. Where does he rank in just terms of <sighs> good? That's is he half? Is he bottom ten? Is he bo- is he top ten? That's way tougher. What do you think? Like, what do you think, Ryan? I think uh, right in the middle. Right in the middle, an average kicker. I get like if if every kicker was a free agent, he gets top ten money out of all of them when everything settles. Okay, so then you think he's a top ten guy? Nothing Probably. I mean, just to it's just tough to say definitively you... coming off of this year. This is insane. But I'm not this ready to Russell, eliminate he's him. He's Russell Wilson. He's better than Russell Wilson. No, he's not. Uh, Russell Wilson I guess was on my board, I'm right him behind all of the years before this, and better than him last year. But Ryan, too. is Russell Wilson going to be in the top sixteen? Yes. Who carried a team I, to a I Super don't think Bowl? You who really, got carried? I don't really think you helped your argument there if you're saying he's Russell Wilson. What I'm saying is <laughs> at least Russell Wilson is a quarterback. He is a quarterback. Yeah, positional value doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I see what you're saying. Brandon Mims yeah. coming off a down year, though, Ryan. Yeah. Um, this is insane. I, I'm not, I'm not no. locking him in. I'm not locking I, him in. I think um, eliminating might be a bad way to go. Let, let, let's, I'll just throw that out there. Let's, let's talk no about... No one, if we've made this list... I'm not willing to eliminate Brandon McManus right not, now, but I'm also I. not going to exactly. count him in. Okay, should Mike McGlinchey be in? Let's just go through guys really yep. quick, see if we can we easily eliminate one or two. In the comments, like he scores points. He does. Anyone would score points in his position. It, you wouldn't. That's fair. That's fair. Um, fair. Let's, <laughs> let's try to eliminate some guys. Mike McGlinchey. If we can't no, eliminate. No, he's not eliminated. Garrett Bowles. Nope, he's not eliminated. Cortland Sutton. He's not eliminated. Greg Dulcich. 
No, he's not eliminated. Alex Singleton. I. No. He's not on my board. He is on mine. Then we're not eliminated. Josie I don't Jewel. think we're getting anywhere. I. He's not on my board. Josie. Uh, you know, either one of those there. guys could probably be Both in there. Both of them have to be there in there, in my opinion. I mean, I know my 16. Not every starter is not going to make it. I know. Just so you know. Damari Mathis. I would be... Pro, uh, He's... I would uh, be willing to, to take him off. We're going to um, have to take people off. Um, and I think based off youth, you could take him off. I if would you take, wanted to. What you're, messing, what you're missing with that is a guy with... Played really well. And a lot of upside still. So no. if you're talking about one game right now. Uh -huh. And I'll say later on, if you convince me not to go with McManus, there's a good chance i put Damari in instead. I would be willing to take both of them out. But I, I would not. What because about, they're what about, online. What about K1? Every I want to see if there's any easy people no, we can get rid of. He's not out. Um, Baron. He's, every name that you say, Hank's he's like, not nope, on mine. he's staying in here. Nope. You got that's, that's what I'm saying. We got to go from Baron the top. Browning's not on yours. He's a ways off. What yep. about you? I'm okay with no Baron Browning. Okay. okay. Baron Browning's gone. And Quinn Minerts. He's... Quinn could make the case as best offensive line. Exactly. So he's obviously in, yeah. Okay. So but now who do we have at number all nine? four of those offensive linemen are going to make this. I do. I don't think so But either. But let, we'll see. Who do you guys have at number nine now? I've got Minerts. I changed mine from Bulls. I was thinking about it during the back Janker ad. I'm just too worried about the penalties. I would Minerts go, is my nine. I would go Mike McGlinchey. Um, okay. A... a Proven, proven guy. I still I'd think. Say, yeah, I'd say Miners more proven, but yeah. Oh, Miners is definitely not more proven. Second team All Pro for Bulls. Yeah. So here we are. Two years ago. I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying we're talking about proven. <laughs> Those are my top three on my board. So I, I'm voting Miners though. And I go. McGlinchey. You go McGlinchey. Yeah, I would. I would. I don't think I'm gonna. We I feel, can do a vote off if you don't take. I feel else. more confident in McGlinchey for one game right now okay. or a full season right now. <laughs> Miners just to me feels more trustworthy just because McGlinchey, the pass see, rushing scenes. See, McGlinchey definitely is to me is more trustworthy. Interesting. And we'll do a ranked thing if you don't pick one of those two. You don't have to pick one of those two. I know. You do have to pick somebody though. You don't so. want to create more conflict. It won't be conflict. <laughs> we, we have a plan. At least I have a plan. If you like one of those guys, just pick them. If you hate both of those options, throw someone else out. <sighs> I seventeen am going million to put dollar tackle. Alex Singleton right here. Oh. Okay. So now we have uh Minards McGlinchy Singleton. Let's all rank. And I'll go Minards McGlinchy Singleton. Um I will go I will go McGlinchy Minard Singleton. Okay, well, I, I, my guy's already yep. out. So, no, actually, because he's going to average two. Uh, Singleton. I'm right back where I was. Uh, yeah. Singleton. Minerts McGlinchey. Boo. So it's Minerts. Okay. Quinn Minerts. All right, number 10. And this is where I go bowls. I'd imagine you still go McGlinchey and Singleton. Yeah. Okay. So now I have Bowles, McGlinchey, Singleton. No, 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 no. You had McGlinchey as your second last time. He was my first. So now oh, he's, no, he's I was, the next one. I was just ranking the out of our three. three. So that was to decide number But that's nine. how we did last time. Last time we took those three options and then because we, we, we because, slotted them in in the next three but spots. But we all though. agreed those were the next three. So we, that's why. <laughs> no, we did figure out number nine. Now it's number 10. All right, fine. Otherwise, I always said Bowles I'm definitely right going McGlinchey ahead of Bowles. Ryan, Bowles, Bowles or McGlinchey or Singleton? I'm going Singleton. Okay. And now uh, you have going, Bowles or Singleton? I'm going... Uh, no gaming the system either. Wait, I'm going what? McGlinchey, Bowles, Singleton. Yeah, rank them. So that's I'm, yours, yep. No, I'm going McGlinchey, Singleton, Bowles. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And I'm... <laughs> Don't overthink. No cheating. I'm Singleton, Bulls, McGlinchey. Singleton, Bulls, McGlinchey. Uh, what so are I you? Think, I can do this in my head. So what are you? So, oh, I'm Bulls, McGlinchey, Singleton. So Bulls has a one, two, three. Singleton has a one, two, three. McGlinchey obviously has a one, two, three. So it's literally all tied. Yeah. Two. Yeah, here. You choose. Oh, Who's number God. one out of those three? Out of those three, I'm going to go uh, probably Bulls. Cool. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. To McGlin not see that coming. McGlinchey is better than Garrett Bowles. Okay, so now McGlinchey's my new number one. He's definitely mine. Yep. So that means we have it. Yep. So it's McGlinchey at 11. Okay, now things open up again. Whoo! 
Whew. We made it through. I feel like the fact that Singleton has been nominated number one by me three slots in a row <laughs> deserves that. <laughs> no, that's just your vote. We vote. Right. Um. So, so here I'll say. Wait, wait, wait. What? What spot are we on right now? Twelve. We're on twelve. So we've got twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, six. We've got five spots left. Yep. And things do open up for me here. I'm torn between Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick, though. I think. Um, I definitely think Tim comes in right about now. I had Sutton first Ooh, above Patrick. I'm going Tim. Tim ahead of Sutton. <sighs> Tim's never. Uh, Tim's best year was Sutton's like I'm not, third. I'm not ready for either of them. Um, I don't. There's just no way I would rather have one of those guys than Alex Singleton. Okay, that's and, fair. And and I would rather have Tim. Tim. Uh, I can get behind I, Tim. I think. Are you Tim one then in this? Uh, it was Sutton one, but if you, I've, I've, I've kind of tied. But if you think Tim, I'm no, going I'm Tim one. Sorry, Singleton. Yep. This is, this is bad. This you is get your, we're talking you get about vote. the top sixteen. It's not bad exactly. to be like no. thirteen or fourteen, but it's still good to make it. I just, I think. He's so is it Singleton then? Player. Is that how? Or I mean, are we Patrick. going Patrick here? But we don't. Like again, like I didn't have Singleton and Josie. Like they're just uh, they. They're when you cross from like. Really good players, so just like yeah, better than average, good to better than average. Nah. But they do come into the conversation. Are here. we going? Are we going, Patrick, or do we need a vote? I'm fine with Tim. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Tim comes in now. Four spots left. We got Sutton, Dulcich, Singleton. I'm fine going Singleton here. K1, Russ. All right, then that Josie decided. that would lock it in. Okay, three I spots. Had a Josie. Okay. Okay. I would go Josie. I was my whole time was Josie goes one after Singleton. Okay. Um, well, I mean, actually, do we need to have a conversation about Singleton or Josie? If you go- Singleton, <sighs> the tackling machine. Yeah. Josie was the playmaker last year. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um. Man, I think I go I, Singleton. Okay. I, I would probably. That's fair. If I can Wait. only have one, I'm taking Singleton and trying to upgrade the other spot because I just know I have a vacuum in the middle and he's going to take down everything. That's fair. Path. That's fair. Uh, you guys are both going. I'm not even going to make a case okay. for Josie because you guys have, have decided him number one, which is, mm-hmm. which is great. So now we only have three spots left. Um, Top of my board, I have Sutton, K1, and Russ. Dulcich. Yeah. <laughs> he's tied with Damari for me. I was going to say, is he better than Sutton? When he played, and we're saying healthy, we're he saying healthy. Saying healthy. Um, I mean, he like set records. He set records for Broncos history. Um, yeah. What are we thinking here? Does Russ fly in here? Um, he's. I don't think so, but I'm willing to be convinced. Honestly, Russ was Russ a top sixteen player on the Broncos last year. No. No, but that's not what this is about. I know. Exactly. I know. I but know. that's a starting Both point. Both him and McManus were probably bottom 16 players on the Broncos last year. You're going to make McManus slide in here if you keep comparing it with Russ for the exact same <laughs> reasons. No, is, this, is this where you want to put Russ? I'm cool with putting Russ here. Okay. So um, right behind Singleton. Uh, I think Sutton was better last year for sure. Is, Sing- is Russ going to be better? I like Russ here. I'm sold. I mean, this just comes if down you guys to think if you so. believe in Russ. Yeah, exactly. That's I believe tough part. with Sean Payton, I do believe in a bounce back. Yeah, me too. Uh, enough of one okay. to be here. What's there you go. He? 14? 14. This is so bad. We got oh, two bad. spots He would have been, been number one overall last year if we did this Without one a year doubt. Oh, today. no, because we had that big fight, remember? Because I was saying Sertan's the better player. And you guys are positional value. So then I went down Stefan Diggs roll. Here's road. the uh, here's the the massive that. issue oh. with this. If this is how the season unfolds, and at the end of the season we're saying, "Damn, did we nail that at the beginning of the season?" Problems. This Broncos team is going to be five wins, six wins, four wins I potentially. Don't know about that. Um, your quarterback absolutely. can't be the fourth, your quarterback can best not, player on No your team. chance. Your quarterback really? has to be top I mean, five to be good. Really should be number one. Giants made the playoffs last year. Um, Daniel Jones was definitely a not top, top ten fourteen, of their, a top no, ten no, player no. on their team. Saquon, you uh-huh. have you just named one. You have defensive guys too. Not I mean, really? <sighs> I don't know. I have to look through the roster. The, he's not. The, he's the, not Daniel there. Jones was helping them rather than hurting them. 
the Giants. Yeah, but the, I think so we're not talking about the Giants being like a fourteen win team. They were nine and nine and eight. Uh, yeah. So they were just good enough. But it was big. Daniel Jones was a huge reason why. Yeah. They didn't give him a forty million dollar contract because he was he was like if one Russ of their, isn't a top ten but, player on this team, they have no shot of making the playoffs. Zero. I totally disagree. Not at I totally all. disagree. Wow. Unless you think Stidham's slotting in there. No. So, <laughs> no. So this is a this is a really bad thing. We hope that Russ is much higher yes, than this. Absolutely. Um Okay, someone said, you guys are still live? Yeah, we need yeah. to finish out this bracket. Let's round it out. Who are we choosing as the last two? I've got Cortland Sutton, Greg Dulcich, Josie Jewell, Damari Mathis, K1 Williams, and Brandon McManus that we've talked about on the board. So we got six guys for two spots. Uh, who, Sam again. Who has to make it? Cortland Sutton, Greg Dulcich, Josie Jewell, Damari Mathis, K1 Williams, and Brandon McManus. When I went through that list, I think Josie Jewell was a top 16 yeah. player last year. And the year before, he only played in two games, but damn, was he good those two games. Year, Consistent yeah. enough. I trust him this year. I think he needs to be in this. I When you said who has to be in, he was the first one that came to my mind. Sorry, who, I got distracted. Josie. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter. Ah. Josie's in. Does okay. he get this spot? 15? I think Sutton is significantly better. I will say that, just for the record. We can, I'm probably fine with putting Sutton at 16. He just he disappears. I mean, that's just... it's That's what receivers do. <clears throat> That is like not he put up what numbers. Receivers do so. You, it would is you, though. Would you go Cort- That's the nature of position. No, it's not. Not not like that. Would you put Cortland Sutton above Brandon McManus, Henry? Uh, easily, yeah. Okay, then Cortland Sutton's a sixteen. Unless you guys want to make a case for Damari Mathis or K1 Williams. Man, damn, K1 needs to be in I here. I feel bad about K1. Yeah, and Dulcich too. I mean, what was his pace? Seven hundred really yard good. pace for a tight end. Again, I mean, that's those are big numbers. Like um, I, I. Again, just for record, I wouldn't have had either linebacker on. We want to do that. we want to do two two game play in. That's what the NCAA tournament does. I don't think so. For what spots? Um, it's has, a great it's a great point. You're <laughs> right. <laughs> You're right. Never I mind. Mean, we could open up the 15 and 16 seed and then bring in four. But I mean, no, we I made would the say hard no. decision. Yeah, I right now we that. have Greg Dulcich, Jamari Mathis, K1 Williams, and Brandon McManus on the outside looking in. I think all. No, of them. I mean th- those guys are on the outside looking yep. in. So Henry said no linebackers, and yep. you were going to include uh, K1 and Cortland. Um, or no, Cortland made it in. Cortland did Cortland's make it in. 16 I'd look at K1. Oh, you wanted Brandon McManus, so I, that one's fine. There was K1, McManus, Dulcich, and Damari were the ones that I, and even Baron. I think Baron compared to the linebackers. What if we did? Would be close. Man, just because you you compared. Brandon McManus and Russ so much. What if they were in a play-in game? Like Russ would not <laughs> <it> so <laughs> You think so? Uh, after, but again, it's just last year. I can't believe you guys want to talk about a kicker as a top sixteen player. <laughs> but we're, it's not. No so we're done. Value. We're done. The conversation is done. If you guys want it to be, we've made. I it. think we did it. We, we went through the process. The um, the the kicker for the Buffs w- was on a video the other day. Uh, I think it was our guy Darius Reach the People Media who put it out, and. Someone said, are you a football player? And he said, no. <laughs> and he said, I'm on the football team, but I'm not a football player. Oh, that's one guy, though. But he plays kicker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, we're taking positional value out, though. Yeah. We're deciding who the best football players are. Okay. There we go. There we We've go. got our bracket. <laughs> we'll let the fans vote. I think the first round's going to be... Uh, I actually don't think the first round's going to be bumpy. I think... Uh, Multiple people have said that Russ and Tim shouldn't have been on here. Tim Again, surprises me. I probably would have gone with Cortland ahead of Tim. I'll just I've so, said before, but so so many people made the argument over this past year, actually over these past eight months since Tim got hurt, that he's their number one receiver. Yeah, and I think and they're we wrong. had Jerry Ware, three. Mm-hmm. I mean, there he, was a big there's a big debate there. If you if there's no, a debate, no, Jerry didn't get three. I don't think did he? What did um, he get? Jerry got four. Okay, okay, but regardless, yeah. yeah. Um, it, Where does Melvin Gordon if there's like a deba- come in here? Oh my gosh! Oh god! Fifty-three. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a debate there, then uh, Tim's got to be in. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so too. Cortland yeah. is just. I'm glad he's in. I'm glad he's in because he would have had the most case for being in if he wasn't. Um, mm-hmm. You could probably even flip his seed with Tim without me arguing. Yeah. Sure, and, and I mean. Statistically, Tim's best seasons are very similar to Cortland's 
two worst seasons. A lot healthy. of people, though, last year thought Tim was going to be the number one receiver. They thought so. Yep. I, I, I think that's wrong. Okay. I'm yeah. just saying and there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot front. of people. Yep. Fair, fair. And it's already been stated in reporting around why the Broncos are trying to mm-hmm. move on from Cortland and Jerry that they view Tim right. yep. as the, the space-eating right. you know, uh, mm-hmm. possession receiver. Yep, yep. We definitely... Ate a lot of space today on this podcast. Oh boy, I'm, we talked about it all. Henry was so right. Oh yeah, we're gonna get <laughs> shredded. This is just not a good idea. No, I think people are gonna yeah, enjoy yeah. voting on <laughs> uh, on this. I think they will. Yeah, and people really enjoy fighting about it and then blaming us for the fights. Yeah. <laughs> don't blame, <laughs> don't blame <laughs> Hank. Don't let's blame keep it, Hank. Let's keep it civil out there. Keep it civil. I, I wonder if we should have put Baron Anyone on. Anyone who watched this show knows I mentioned it. You took him off hard. right away. I took, Anyone who I watched took the Singleton show knows and Josie how hard off too. that actually was to do. It was. It was yeah. very hard. It's actually nice doing it live so people are not just like, you just did it. Uh, right, half we night, like, like put legitimate thought into it. It was difficult. And, and there's so many disagreements that basically whenever somebody gets mad, two of us will be able to say, yeah, yeah I I said said that. hey, hey, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> Yeah, and as CC said, Zach Azani, as Jane Palmer told us, uh, yeah. thought Tim was the best receiver in the room last year. The guy that knows him better than anyone. I feel vindicated. Good, thank you. Yeah. Wait, you but you made the case for Jerry being so high up. Oh, I well, Jerry is obviously better, but <laughs> I'm just saying I feel vindicated about putting Tim over. <laughs> okay. Portland. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Want to look at these matchups at all before we go? Because they're interesting. DJ Jones versus Quinn. Garrett Bowles versus Ben Powers. Mike McGlinchey mm. versus Randy Gregory. Can we, can we get it pulled up on the screen? Tim I Patrick. I visually see it. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we've got Pat Sertan, one seed, going against Cortland Sutton, 16 seed. Poor Court. He doesn't stand a chance. What I love about that is we we see that on the field in training camp. It's yep. like actually oh, so a fun matchup these, to, to envision. Yep. Quinn Minerts as the nine seed, against going up DJ against DJ Jones. Jones as the eighth seed. That's and I like that one. we didn't intentionally build this. In fact, yeah, I couldn't cheat. see this when it was being built. It was a lot smaller. All right, we've got our first upset alert. Jerry is on upset alert. Jerry, Judy, the four seed, going against Alex Singleton, the 13th uh, seed. Four 13s. They've happened this saying, year. I'm not saying yeah. it's, it's a lock. I'm not picking it, but Jerry is on upset alert. Yep. I, I think he mm-hmm. is as well. Um, then number eight or number five, Zach Allen going against 12, Tim Patrick. That's big Zach time on, upset, upset alert. alert. Time. You're talking yeah. about a fan favorite who's coming off injury mm-hmm. with the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, that's tough. Yep. Number two, Justin Simmons going up against number 15, Josie Judy. Jewel. Yeah, that's kind of a lock. Yeah, I think so too. Yep. Yep. Number seven, Ben Powers going up against number ten, Garrett Bowles. Ben Probably Powers. Powers will win. Honeymoon face. Yep. Yeah. Um, number three, Javante Williams going up against number fourteen, Russell Wilson. That's draw Javante. For Russ. He's going out in the first round. <laughs> yeah. <that's Javante. laughs> yep. But a fourteen seed, you probably should be going out in the first round. Yep. Um, and then the final one, we've got number six, Gregory Randy Gregory going up eleven, Mike McGlinchey. That'll be McGlinchey, a honeymoon phase. This yeah. is like a my, McGlinchey's only like plus one hundred five in this match. Again, because nobody like heard the reasoning. Or some people did, but a lot of this is just going to go out to Twitter, and they're like, "Wait, what?" No, I disagree. I think if people just look at the bracket. They're going to have a ball with this. They're going to love it. Um, when we just did that, that was fun to be like, oh, who's who's there? Oh, yeah. um, but if they look at it and say, who's not on here yeah, and let me make a fuss mad. about, that's when they're going to make make get mad. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to have more people enjoy this and enjoy the matchups and, and choosing and debating than we are people um, getting left out. Yeah. Because it's... It's hard to look at sixteen guys and then in your head mentally think who did they leave out, that is and then true. let me get mm-hmm. let me get mad at those That's guys. That's true, unless like your favorite player is Kwan Williams. So I'm happy we did this, right? Exactly, <laughs> but I'm happy we did that last part because it made me feel better. I we're, f- we're ready to send this out to the world. We're gonna we're gonna come back pretty battered on Monday. That's I don't my think so. Okay. I think so. I think we're All in right. good shape. We'll see. Uh, Patrick yeah. Tan is minus five hundred to win the whole thing. Oh, Ooh. he's winning. He's it's more than that. Yeah, he, he is doesn't. winning, but minus yeah. five hundred. Minus. 5,000. Wow. Who's wow. beating him in the championship game? Let, let's make our early again. picks, early predictions. Last look at the bracket and then yep, we're done. Yep, yep, So you got to look at it on the other side. You guys want to predict each matchup real quick? No. We'll no. do that. We can... No. No. <laughs> Man, obviously the, the easy one is to go with number two, Justin Simmons. Um, so Justin Simmons doesn't have to see Javante yeah. until... The final four. Yep. That's Simmons. gonna be a close matchup. I think Simmons pulls it out based on just being the best dude. I think McGlinchey could come out of that region also. 
Uh, not not past Simmons probably, but but past Javante. I think Javante is going to be in the finals against Justin uh, in in that region, so the conference finals, and Justin's going to get it. It's it's just going to be a classic one two matchup. Yep. It's going to be the heavyweights at the end. Mm-hmm. Other side's probably Jerry. Patton. Oh, Jerry could go out in first round. I don't know. He can't. I mean, if there is some anti-Jerry sentiment. I think there's that been get it going. so much positive Jerry sentiment this offseason. But mm-hmm. he's fans got so- do this thing where they th- if they think you might get traded, they start to disassociate Vote against from you. you. I don't brackets. think so, though. <laughs> I think they've been doing the opposite this year. I think his stock has been only getting higher so. this offseason. Since the season ended, yep. I think people view Jerry more, more favorably than they did the day the season ended. A lot of people will, again, it's, wait, you're trading him for a first? I don't know if I'd do that. If he's you know? traded, then that's going to happen right away. Yeah, exactly. I but, think it's but already into, happening. I don't think so. I don't think uh, so. Also, who do you guys think, who do you guys think is a Cinderella? Goes Singleton. further than you expect. Um, can uh, I see it again really quick? Oh my god. Um, Patrick or Sutton? I think Sutton is a ah, but he has to go out early. Man, Singleton could do it. I still see him getting past Jerry. Tough going against Jerry though. I'm telling um, you, I just think that there's a chance that the anti-Jerry crowd. No one wants Russell Wilson more than the Broncos country. Broncos country should want him to go as far as possible in this. I think well, it's Tim Patrick. Yeah, Tim Patrick also might be yep. the Cinderella. I think, again, Zach Allen, defensive lineman, people don't yeah. really know him. I like and it, then Tim. If, then there he matches go. up against Jerry in the second round. Yep. He's, gonna he's got a chance. Too, yeah. right, he's got a chance. Right. There we this go. Fun. There we go. I love it. Maybe. It's going to be fun. See, it's going to be fun. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> all right, we'll wrap there. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in all week. Uh, appreciate everyone who stuck with us for 95 minutes today. Uh, what is wrong with you? We will catch you on Monday.